Inglese Vero Podcast. Conversazioni e storie in inglese vero. Ciao, sono Stefano Roganti, fondatore di inglesevero.it. In questo podcast ti racconterò alcune mie storie in inglese, personali, sull'inglese e avrò delle conversazioni in inglese con i miei amici, madrelingua e non, da tutto il mondo che parlano inglese vero. L'utilità di questo podcast è quello di abituarti ad un inglese vero, senza filtri, senza livelli, che viene utilizzato in tutto il mondo. Con l'ascolto di questi podcast ti abituerai ad un inglese come non hai mai fatto prima, così da poterne sfruttare tutta la magia senza confini. Buon ascolto! Hello David! Hello! Hello, how are you? I'm okay. Yeah, good. Uh, thanks for coming here, first of all. And uh, today we're going to, I don't know, I'm going to ask you just a few questions to get to know yourself mm-hmm. um, and for the students to listen to some, uh, some of your background. So mm-hmm. the first question I usually ask is, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Just the basic background. Where are you from? Well, your name, we know your name is David. And what, what, what you do, your life, and you know, just the basic background about okay. yourself. Yeah. Like 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Right? Yeah, 20 minutes is yeah, fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A couple of minutes then. I will interrupt you, anyways. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you, okay. you just go with the flow. Okay, go with the flow. All right. Uh, well, should I start off with I was born? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, okay. what I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Start like from the beginning. Physical and, things, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was born in um, Madison, Wisconsin. To the United States. The United States, oh, yeah. good. Because you probably knew that I was American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Students yeah. probably didn't know that. Now the But students wouldn't hear that. Now they do. Now yeah. they know. No, yeah. No. Okay. I could uh, hear the accent. Yeah. Okay, I was, let's say, I was born in, in Madison, Wisconsin, but I grew up near Chicago. Yeah? Oh. And um, let me see. Well, and, uh, well, you can ask other questions about my story and so on. But to simplify, uh, when I was about. Uh, 30, I uh, came to Spain, actually, well, first of all, I came to Europe in general, I worked in England for about six months. Oh, you went to England from, yeah. from, from, from the United States? Well, no, I, you tra- went from... I went for, well, from the United States, I went to Frankfurt, because that Frankfurt, was okay. Frankfurt, Germany. Yeah. Didn't want to stay in Frankfurt, Germany, because yeah. it didn't look like a very nice place, uh, but that was where the cheap flight was. So, okay. <laughs> so I was and so I was just traveling around. I traveled around Germany a little bit, and then I went to uh, went to Paris, and uh, and then um, and then I went back to Germany, and then uh, I was running out of money. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was told that in if you you know that in England it's not difficult to get. To get a job. Especially, I think, for the language as well, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, Cause because you... I sort of knew English at that time. Yeah, you sort of, yeah. Sort of, sort yeah. Of, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I, I went to uh, I went to London, and I got a job in a pub, and I worked there for about six months. So you started as a, as a, as a pub uh, waiter, as yeah. as everybody does when you go to England. That's really it's interesting. A, yeah, because there's a lot of pubs, and there's yeah. a lot of people drinking. And, and it's easy to get there and start the job, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's not too hard to work in a pub. Yeah. It's not, it's not, a, you don't have to be real smart. <laughs> yeah. So anybody and, can do it, yeah. Well, just anybody, just anybody. I mean, I thought I was pretty good at it, you know, because I could remember all these drinks and I could remember yeah. how much they cost. And if you become good, I think you can also, like, make, um, you know, you, you can uh, become a manager, supervisor very soon. If yeah? you live so, long enough. If you yeah. live long enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But you also, like, I remember... That I was pretty good at making Bloody Marys. Oh, Bloody Marys, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was, and people liked my Bloody Marys, you know. Yeah, and Bloody so, Marys, by the way, who doesn't know, it's a cocktail made yeah. with uh, tomato juice. Yeah. Tomato juice, yeah, and uh, juice, gin. Vo- gin, not vodka. Gin, gin. You can use vodka, I think. But I think but in I think England, in England gin is... I think, yeah. I think it was a long time ago I made them, but I think it's usually with gin. Yeah, it should be with gin. And, and, and I think, and then... The trick is that you need to put in a little bit of what's called bitters, which is angostura. Angostura, yeah. You know, just a couple of drops. And that makes... And, and, and some pepper. Yeah, okay. fresh pepper. Yeah, 
Beautiful. And then there's ice, and I think there's lemon. And the Bloody Mary is what people, traditionally people drink the morning after. In other words, when people have a oh. hangover, then <laughs> they come into the pub and they, they you know, and you have the typical customer comes into the pub at 11 o'clock in the morning. So it's the open. hangover drink. Yeah. The Bloody Mary. He says, give me a Bloody Mary, please. You know? <laughs> really? And since my Bloody Marys were pretty good, there were people who appreciated them. So as people well. would recover from yeah. the hangover yeah. after. And, yeah. I, and I was proud of my work. Yeah. You know? I was proud of my work as a barman and so on. And, and, and I kind of liked it. I met all these strange people. And, uh, and some people were not so strange. And so I had a pretty good time. But I got tired of it. And yeah. uh, so, and I decided to go to Spain. Spain? Oh, okay. Yeah. This is the weather. Why did you decide, I mean, from England to Spain? I don't really know exactly. You just but did? I just decided that I had enough of London and, and it was summertime. You know, and, and it was and, summertime. Yeah. yeah, it was summertime. So anyway, so I had to well, I hope I can't go to Spain. And actually, my plan was to go to Mallorca because I had the idea that in Mallorca there are lots of English people, yeah. and I could get a job in a pub since I was not as you know expert pub person. Yeah, you know, I thought. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> but on the way, uh, there was a friend of mine, American friend of mine, because actually the the friend that I came over to Europe with. Uh -huh. Frankfurt, and then we split up. He was in Spain in a little town near the city of Girona. And he was in, living in Girona this. is near Barcelona as well. Well, well it's, not it's near, but near, just to picture 100, it. Yeah. 100 kilometers to the Hun north. Oh, wow, 100 kilometers. Uh, to the north of, of Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'll stop off and see him, and so on. And so I stopped off and see, saw him, and he was uh, staying, living in this house with these other people, uh, American people as well, uh -huh. in this tiny village. And it's very, it's a very small village and it's very kind of sort of, to me, looked very medieval. Medieval, be, uh, yeah, because beautiful. you know, it's all these yeah. sort of stone houses and so on and so on. And um, I remember when I arrived there, when I finally got to the place where they're living, first of all, the road, the street, the main street of yeah. the village, which was basically the only street practically, um, was just dirt, you know. Oh, dirt. Oh, so it, it was wasn't paint. Was no, no, no paint. asphalt, no paint. nothing. No wow. Yeah. And the the house was like this big front door, you know, with yeah. double old wooden double doors. Yeah. You know? Okay. Nice. And you go in, and we're outside in the streets. Very it's, it's sunshine and so on. You go in. It's very dark because there are no <laughs> windows. <laughs> okay. And you look up, and and and. The downstairs, the ground floor, there's nothing there. You know? Well, oh. there's, there's some stuff, but the, and there's this sort of tile floor, so but nothing there. So I look around and so on, and then I, I see that there's some stairs going up, and so I go to the bottom of the stairs, and there's this person up there says, "Come up, come up." So he said in Spanish, he says, "Sube, sube." So I sube, didn't know, sube, huh? so I, I didn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Right? And also, I didn't know what, why was he upstairs and why wasn't there anything downstairs. Afterwards, I learned that in these old village houses, yeah. the ground floor was where they kept the animals yeah. and the tools. Yeah. And people lived upstairs. upstairs. Yeah. 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 And that was the kind of house it was. So I thought all this was pretty fascinating, you know, because was, when you yeah. come from America, from America like, you don't have that kind they, of thing. You don't have that kind of thing. No, it's all modern, have, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, these old stone houses. Actually, that's, the, I remember now, over the doorway to the house was the date of the year oh. it was built. It was 1787 or something wow. like that. So like, it was old. Oh, you know? yeah. yeah. You don't, in America, you don't have so much old stuff. You no, know? no so, that's, it wasn't discovered before yeah. that. So anyway, so I was pretty <laughs> fascinated with this place. And so I, I and, and I also soon realized that I had run out of money again. And so what was the next job you had after that? Well, Did people, you find a pub? No, I didn't find a pub because there weren't any pubs around there. There were just bars and they were very different than the pub and nobody was interested in somebody who didn't know how to speak Spanish. Yeah. Or, you know? Okay, so uh, people said, look, don't worry. I said, teach English. That's it. Yeah. And I said, well, I don't know anything about teaching English. It doesn't matter. You speak you English. Speak English. That's, a, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the European idea of English teachers. You speak English, you can be a good teacher. You know? yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, they think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, so, not, so yeah. I started teaching English. And, 
And how, how did you jump you know, from there? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, like, what about today? Where are you today? From, from that Girona, not in Girona, near yeah, yeah. Girona house. Where are you today? I mean, well, today, after I, a few years. Yeah, I live uh, in Bernadette Alt, which is a little town pretty close to Barcelona. It's, it's uh, 25 kilometers. What is 30. the name of the town again? Premia. Premia? De doubt. De doubt. De doubt. De doubt. 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 Because doubt is up. Uh, it's Catalan, Catalan, yeah? Catalan. Very yeah. difficult language. Okay. No, it's not a difficult language. But Catalan, pretty well, it's pretty difficult. Obvious. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but the thing is that there's Premia de Mar. Yeah, ah, Mar, de Mar. is the sea. So yeah. you've got Premia de Mar, which is down below, on and the Premier, coast. And Premia de Doubt, which is up, up yeah. on the hill, up the hill. Yeah? Okay, so we're up the hill. Okay, and I live there in Premia de Doubt with my wife and uh, Beagle and uh, at the moment we have one cat but it seems like pretty soon we're going to have some more cats. Oh beautiful, I love cats, I've got two. And you got two cats? Yeah, I think they're really really intelligent creatures. Not only intelligent because they are intelligent, intelligent because they, they make me more intelligent by <laughs> trying to understand them. Yeah. They're really like yeah. smart. Yeah. Yeah, they're also smart at like giving you the impression that they're smart. Yeah, it's, it's, when they yeah. when they aren't necessarily because they're very cool. Yeah, no, they they know how to pretend. I mean, yeah. they, they know the whole game. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really interesting. And uh, what do you do today? I mean, do you still teach English? No, no, no. Fortunately, I fortunately, stopped, <laughs> fortunately for lots of people and for myself, oh, I right. stopped teaching English. And for some time, I worked as a translator. I'm trying to and but now I'm retired, so now I just take care of the house and the shopping and and the dog and the cats and uh, and I write a bit of poetry. Poetry, oh, that's 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 something that never. I mean, it doesn't always come up with people. You know, talking about poetry, you know, especially if I meet some uh, some people who know poetry. Usually, they are very complicated poetry people. Uh, yeah. Yesterday I heard. I, I'm pretty complicated. Eh? Yeah, yeah, I just simplify. Yeah, yeah, you have, you, but you know how to simplify, maybe or not? Yeah, I, I hope so. Yeah. yeah, because I remember yesterday when you were talking about the wor uh, at the workshop about the about your way of teaching us poetry. Uh, I mean, you simplified the idea of poetry to me. It yeah. was like, oh, so it doesn't have to be difficult. Yeah. But what's behind is complicated. Mm -hmm. We are all yeah. very complicated creatures. Yeah. I guess we're not like cats, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so um, so I like the way you thought about you taught us about poetry, and uh, I think some people could be interested in English poetry starting from how do you say it? simple language. It yeah, doesn't have to yeah. be complex. Complex, yeah. Yeah, the thing that I was trying to get across, because of course we were talking about mm, poet, the idea of uh, kids in school studying English as a second language, writing poetry. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. so you need to talk about. First of all, you need to make clear that okay, some there is poetry that's very complex and difficult to understand. Yeah, and there is poetry that's not complex poetry, as I put it, poetry in simple language. And there's a lot of poetry in simple language, and there's a lot of Poetry, which is important, yeah. it's in simple language. Yeah, that's what I meant. I mean, yeah, it doesn't yeah. have to be. I mean, if it, even if it's simple or easy to understand, mm. it could give you also like a big yeah. emotions or yeah. and, thought and, and the fact that it's in simple language doesn't mean that it was easy to do. No, no, it's no. Quite, yeah, quite that's the contrary. Yeah. You, know? that, that's, you think, oh, well, this is really easy. I, mean, I can any, do it. Anybody could do that. Well, no. Yeah, you, you couldn't do that. Can, can you tell me the story that you told yeah, me yesterday yeah. about the, the yeah. man, you know, okay. the anecdote? Well, this that was this, beautiful. There's a, this a thing that an, an artist, a uh, painter, said to me years ago. He said, you, you know, imagine, because you would hear this, you know, people, man goes into uh, an art gallery. You know, an art gallery, right? yeah. He goes into art gallery and there's abstract paintings. You know? Yeah, there's crazy ones. Picasso, uh, John Jackson Pollock, you know, that. he looks at these paintings and he says, Pfft. My kid could do that. Yeah. The artist says, yeah, maybe your kid could do that, but you couldn't. <laughs> That's my favorite. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the children could replicate that yeah. easily. 
if they have the inspiration. Well, not, not replicated, but the, not the, really. the idea is that, that like the they child is going to be natural enough to say, okay, I can what, do what, it. I, what I want to do, well, no, what I want to do is play around with colors and play around with shapes and just mess and they, around. And they could do it. And they could do it because what they might come out with would be natural and it would be something that pleases them. And they wouldn't even know before doing that. Exactly. There would, wouldn't be a plan. It'd be like you, you're just doing it. And the pleasure of doing it, it's, it's going to come across. Yeah. But you the know? parents wouldn't. <laughs> no, because, because by the time you get to, 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 to my age, by the time you get to your age, you've spent so much time being told what's the right way to do, the, do things. That you forget. That you, the, you, you, it's very difficult to get spontaneity. Yeah, spontaneity, intuition, yeah. Or, or just do something yeah. just because you feel like doing it yeah, without exactly. knowing yeah. what's going to come up. Yeah. It's, but, like the, it's like this interview, you know, we started the interview mm -hmm. without knowing what we, we yeah. were going to, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one other thing about the poetry in simple languages yeah. is that mm, probably uh when you start out when the, the, the writer starts out uh the beginning is very different than the final product oh uh, yeah because, the many drafts because, yeah because uh first of all you need to cut stuff you need to be very careful you need to think well is this the word that i want is this is this last two lines because the last two lines are going to be very important yeah are these two last two lines really work and you change around and you think about it and think about it. And maybe you're doing all that thinking and all those changes yeah. to come up with something that's maybe Five lines. 20 words long. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know? It's like, like the, I told you yesterday, there's this Italian poet, which is uh, Ungaretti, you know? Uh -huh. I mean, he wrote one of the most famous poems that is uh, like, uh, I think it's one or two lines. Yeah. I mean, the poem itself, I think, is shorter than the title. Yeah. And it's one of the most impressive it's called Soldati, he speaks uh -huh. about war, it's a bit yeah, yeah, yeah. tough, you can look it up, and it's, uh, it's amazing, because I didn't know anything about poetry, uh -huh. reading that, I yeah. felt as bad as a soldier in war, Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it just got the impression, it's mm -hmm. like, wow, there was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how long it took him to come up uh -huh. with this yeah. one line, anyway, um, we could talk for years here, <laughs> and I'd love to, uh, so let's uh, wrap it up with, uh, what would you add to this interview something that you want to tell about yourself something special about yourself some i don't know anything about yourself like like quick and just for the student to remember or something that you like to do a poem whatever you feel well, like okay well i would like to add one thing <clears throat> i suppose because i'm a little bit like uh, like a lot of people that write i'm a little in in the end i'm a little vain Vain. Vain. Or oh, like yesterday you told me when I asked you for this interview, you say, I am, um, how do you say? Narcissistic. Narcissistic. And I yeah. say, oh yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Well, because one time I remember years ago, there was a, a famous, who's dead now, a famous uh, Catalan writer, writer, actually wrote in Spanish, this Catalan, um, Manuel Vázquez Montalban. And one time in an interview, he used to do lots of interviews, and, and um, uh, the interviewer said, well, Mr. Montalban, do you think... Uh, you are a bit vain. And he, said, he said, well, of course. <laughs> Anybody who writes books and expects other people to read, read them has said, to be a little vain. You, that, that's why I love when you told me that you're a bit narcissistic. I say, oh, that's what I want, you know, someone <laughs> yeah. stand in front of a camera yeah. and expect because, someone to because listen I mean, to. Yeah, because, so it's a, you know, <laughs> and see, before uh, starting to write portraits, I just, I started to write poetry just a few years ago, but I, I used to, I wrote novels and I wrote novels. Oh. Yeah, so I. And the oh. sorry, the funny thing is that you said that you started writing, not in your own language. No, that's poetry. That was yeah the po the poetry I, I I because I had some friends who were doing poetry that you know yeah. in Spanish and so on, and so because I'm also a little bit competitive. So you started being narcissist. I've got lots of. Oh, you want to do it in another language? Yeah. So no, be... no, it was because these people are doing this. I thought, well, the third job is maybe I can do this too. So I, better. So I got this no. idea. And I wrote this. I wrote this. So you this started poem. in Spanish. Yeah, so that's the cool thing. Because yeah. people will, you know, sometimes they want to learn English and think, oh, but I'm going to learn English, but 
I'm not able, I'm not going to be able to do much with English. Yeah. Which is not true because you started to, to write poems yeah. in a language which is not your own. Yeah. So people can start writing poems yeah. in English even if the language yeah. is not their own. That's, yeah. Yeah. It's that's actually, a good actually I, I had before that I wrote <clears throat> the novels that I, the, I wrote crime novels and I actually wrote them originally in English. But one time I wrote a, a novel for young people. Yeah. You know, and I, I wrote that straight in, Spanish. straight in, straight out in Spanish. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I think that's that's a good message. You know, be a little bit narcissistic if you feel you are. You know, don't be afraid yeah. of being vain. If yeah. you are vain, w yeah. what can you do? Well, the other thing is that when you do this kind of stuff, because a lot of times, you know, like you you. You write this book, you know, and, yeah. then, and then you gotta sell it to somebody. You gotta get somebody. To so you gotta, it. yeah. And that may take you a couple of years because yeah. they send out to this place. They say, "No, we're not interested in this." Send it out to another place. They're not interested. So if you have to have pretty much a good deal of self confidence to because otherwise you'll just give oh, up. Yeah, you nobody know. wants my thing. Oh, oh poor me. <laughs> you know, it's not and you can't do that because yeah. then you'll stop. You will not achieve your goal. Yeah, your yeah, role. yeah. So you have to be a little bit silly and say, oh, I'm really good. Yeah, I can do, yeah, I can do it. I'm good even, even if you're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay, thank you very much, David. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Yes. My Bye. pleasure. Bye. Grazie per aver ascoltato questo episodio del podcast di Inglese Vero. A prescindere dal tuo livello, ti consiglio comunque di riascoltare il podcast più volte. Se sei all'inizio, riascoltare ti servirà per poter capire meglio e farci l'orecchio. Ogni persona che intervisto ha un modo di parlare inglese diverso e serve tempo per farci l'abitudine. Se il tuo livello è un po' più alto, riascolta per cogliere parole ed espressioni che non hai colto la prima volta. E se proprio vuoi trarre il massimo dal podcast, riascolta anche successivamente cercando eventuali errori miei e del mio ospite. Indipendentemente dal fatto che tu li possa trovare o meno, indipendentemente dal fatto che esistano, questo di per sé è un esercizio potentissimo. In alcuni episodi trovi anche la trascrizione completa, che ti aiuterà a capire e verificare l'ascolto. Dove questo sia disponibile troverai il link nella descrizione. Aiutami a diffondere il podcast lasciandomi un commento, soprattutto se il podcast ti è piaciuto, e condividendolo con i tuoi amici. Più saranno gli ascolti, i download e i commenti, più potrò proseguire con altri episodi sempre più utili e interessanti. Tu sei la mia motivazione. Se non mi conosci, ti invito nel mio sito www.ingleseVero.it dove trovi contenuti e curiosità su come imparare, mantenere e praticare inglese in modo concreto. In modo vero, come lo chiamo io. E poi potrai anche contattarmi se ne avrai bisogno.